broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to our worldwide webinar, Tips and Tricks for Docuware Administrators. My name is Phil Robson and I'm responsible for the customer support in the Americas and I'm your host of this webinar for today. We're really proud that we have such a large audience attending from across the world and we thank you for being here with us. Our goals for today are that we want to give you some tips for updating to DocuWare 7, help you solve any problems you come across doing that on your own, and to show you the new features of Workflow Manager with DocuWare 7. Now, finding the most the, or the best topics to bring to you is a bit of a challenge and we strive to cover as much as possible but still keep it relevant to you. We're always open to your ideas and the topics you're interested in so please just let us know. However, with this major release of DocuWare we know that these two topics are tips for upgrading to DocuWare 7 and the new features of Workflow Engine are important to share with you today. Oops. Okay, now I'd like to introduce you to our team for today. Uh, your presenter for the tips and tricks <coughs> um, is uh, Daniel Xanthikos from the EMEA side, and he's supported by Chris Haynes from the America's support team. Welcome, Daniel. Good evening. Well, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, good morning. respectively. And welcome, Chris. Well, maybe we won't hear from Chris. And your presenter today for the workflow manager is Chris Ewer and from the America support team. And he is supported by Stefan from the EMEA support team. Welcome, Chris. Thank you for having me. And welcome, Stefan. Hi. Now, our presenters for today are on the front line of support for our partners and customers, and they have a lot of current knowledge to bring to you. Our moderators for the webinar today are Sebastian, Manager of Team Red, EMEA, Christian Hohenberger, Manager of Team Blue, EMEA, and Maria Holden, Manager of Support for the Americas. Welcome, team. Hi, Thank Phil, you. and hi, everybody. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Okay, the most relevant questions that we ask today uh, related to the topics presented will be collected by Sebastian and he will answer the um, two or three most interesting questions uh, in the Q&A sessions between the, web the webinar. Now to ask a question, simply enter the uh, question in the questions box and one of the members of one of the moderators will uh, attempt to answer your question. Any question that we can't answer during the webinar, we will collect all questions at the end of the webinar and we'll answer them in a posting um, in several days' time. So now to check the, the quality of the audio, uh, I'd like everybody, if you wouldn't mind, to quickly enter the city that you are connected from today into the Q&A panel. All right, that looks good. I'm getting responses, so obviously everyone can hear me okay. Thank I you very much. Let's come and sit there. Okay, so now it's time to start the session. So Daniel, Daniel, would you please take over? Okay, thanks, Phil. Um, so, let me just show you this. Okay. All right. Um, so, what we will talk about, you already heard from Phil, everything you need to know to upgrade from six to seven. Of course, this is a rather large topic. So what I will cover are the most important parts, which are also all the parts you need to know. Everything else would be nice to know. Um, so, first of all, we will go about everything you have to do before you upgrade or you have to know before you can upgrade. Then we'll take a look at what's new in the setup, what's better in the setup. Afterwards, we have a quick look at the database directly in my VM. 
what changed here, tables, fields. And last but not least, we'll took a look at the post upgrade stuff. So everything we have to do after you upgrade to ensure a clean and well-running system. To start it off, features pushed to 7.1. Um, most important is probably the support for DW4 disks and DW4 documents. This has been pushed to 7.1. So if you have those disks, then please migrate them before the upgrade. Um, I would recommend this anyways, because it's much cleaner to have them all migrated to DW4 disks, uh, DW5 disks, sorry, and have everything clean and running. Also support for cold files, that is also not coming in 7, but later. Um, reference only files is something, well, that will probably not interest most of you. It's a very minor function that was in the Windows client, which basically allowed you to store only references to files in DocuShare and still have them on your machine. When you try to open them, it would open the document in your local machine. Not widely used and not supported in DocuShare 7. Yes, and that's pretty much it, which was pushed back. Um, so going on to the removed or replaced features. First of all, we removed some of the file community disk options. Most of them was just spring cleaning, like the capacity limit and cluster size and so on. But one thing might be important for some of you, we remo removed the automatic add and switch to a new file community disk. Um, you can of course still do this manually, but remove the automatic function um, because we didn't, we, because it wasn't a use case anymore. But if you need it, you can still do it. Migration workflow and restore workflow. Those have been completely replaced because as you might have noticed during the last versions, uh, more and more of the administration tool is, is being migrated to the web client configuration. So these two are gone since in Docker Cloud, we don't have them. So what you will have on on-premise systems are two separate tools on Docker um, which are executed manually. They will have the same functions um, or, well, e are even better as what you currently have, um, but you will not execute them from the administration tool anymore. There's only one thing to keep in mind. Um, before you upgrade, make sure that you save all your configurations or take note of them in some way because they will be automatically removed during the upgrade. Next up, content server and workflow engine server. As most of you will have heard, those have been removed and well, ported into DLLs and distributed to all our services, which is much better, obviously. A thumbnail server is gone, which, well, now the platform is doing its job and is much better at that. The job server is, has been removed as well. Um, as well, this, some of you may have already noticed this, but the desktop was well not really scalable except with a couple of workarounds because of the job server. So by removing that and allowing the desktop to um, communicate directly with the platform, it's now possible to correctly scale desktop. HHP, ASA, SAP HTTP server version one is also gone. Um, the functional well the support has been removed and you would will all the all all of you will have to use version two. Um, a side grade is available in professional services if you need that. Validation of version one. Well, you can guess why it's gone. These were DLLs in the content server directory. So with the content server, this has died as well. So please all use validation version two, which is basically a web service. Logging agents are gone now as well. Um, this has been improved too. We now have the audit function. And by default, all important tables have the respective audit tables, which logs much more and much more precisely than the logging agents did previously. You can, of course, still um, enable manual auditing like you did with logging agents before. All your old logging will still remain, by the way. We will not delete the old logging tables. Next up, sync version one. We already released Sync version two a couple of versions ago. So this is what you should use from now on. We will remove Sync version one completely since it is removed from the admin tool. So if you were not on 6.12 yet and had not executed your Sync version one workflows yet, please make sure to first upgrade to 6.12, run all your version one Sync workflows at least once and then go to seven because the Sync version one workflow, it fills a um, DW doc GUID field 
And if this is not filled, sync version two will not know that this document has already been synced. And because of that, it will duplicate all documents. So make sure you do that. And then migrate all of your workflows to sync version two, and then you can upgrade to seven without losing anything and with having even a cleaner configuration than before. Please just keep in mind that sync version two is, cannot be used with versioning file cabinets. If you need to know anything else about this workflow, we have a um, KBA article 35849. Um, we will post this in a forum later. So, you, but you can of course note this down now, so you can just look it up. Next up, database. Database connections cannot use localhost anymore. You will always have to use a server name or an or NLP here. Um, this is something you will have to change in all your database connections in the admin tool and in the DW machine config file. So please keep that in mind. Um, in Oracle, there are, of course, as usual, some special things, <laughs> as always. Um, you have to make sure that all fields are at a maximum length of 20 before you upgrade, because otherwise there will be issues, since Oracle has the maximum um, database object length of 30 since I don't know when, and we might exceed that. This does not apply if you use Oracle 12.2, because there, finally, they removed this limit. So if you can go to 12.2, I would strongly recommend that. Then you won't have to look out for this. Next up, the well, we ship a certain Oracle Manager Data Access DLL. I would not read that out. Um, please make sure that in your global assembly cache, you have at least this version or a newer one. Because if you have an older one, then we might face issues during the setup. If you have none in your cache, then that's perfect. Um, and while you're at it, please remove all .NET components of your ODAC, because this might interfere with the setup as well. This, for instance, could write into the global assembly cache. Moving on to SDK, well, some of the fields were changed from day to day time in the platform, and this will break any applications built with the very old 6.8 DLLs. So if you have made use of these fields, please upgrade to the newer DLLs. Um, backwards compatibility is as always guaranteed, so you won't lose anything. Except if the platform doesn't know a function your DLLs do, but that is extremely rare, so that won't happen. No trouble do not. Setup. So let's have a look at what is shiny and new in the setup. First of all, the workflow upgrade. Um, the integrity check is now executed automatically during a setup. So if you come from 6.11, you will know that. Um, this will check if your workflow is fine and won't have any issues with the new hotfix back in 6.11, which most of you will probably remember. Um, we now do this during the setup so you won't face any issues with your workflows. Uh, which is what is important too is that all current instances and all history data is separated and put into DW data. This is especially important if you're using um, MSSQL Express because there you have your 10 gigabyte limit. And you might also want to check your disk space and so on depending on where your separate data databases are lying because DW data will likely grow quite a bit. This of course is mainly done to reduce load on the workflow engine and separate the load on more tables, which of course will in turn improve the performance of the whole workflow. Next up, setup in case of failure. Well, you all, all of you probably already faced errors during a setup. Um, we have now improved the behavior of it when that happens. So first of all, we execute the setup in blocks. So if one of the blocks fail, we can roll back that separate block and then try this one again and not just start all over. Um, and you can do all of that without executing the setup once. Most important is probably that we change the order of the upgrade. For, um, in the past, we upgraded the files first and database after. So if you cancel the setup, you would have the files on, on the newer version, database on the older version, which then forced you to restore your file system. 
we now switch that around. So if you cancel a setup for any reason, then you will have a clean system afterwards. So we can just continue working like you did before without issues, which is very, very nice. Of course, please still do backups of your file system, of your database and everything, because as always, please have a fail safe. And that's basically all. So next up, we will look at a few changes in the database. First up, file cabinet seven, document headers. Well, with the removal of the content server, we restructured our file cabinet and removed the need for headers completely. So we will not look at them doing search or doing index change or anything like we did before. Um, all the information is now stored in the section table of the file cabinet, which previously was only for full text textures and so on and so on. Um, which we still do is a backup of the header information on the file system in the form of DWX files. These are basically zip files you can um, unzip and then take a look at what's inside. Um, these are not written during the storage process or change process of the document, but afterwards. So we won't, well, so we won't bother the, bother the database so much. Basically, our background process service is taking a look at when do we have time, when do we have resources, and then writes these files or updates them. Um, and these are the files which are, by the way, then used for the restore if you want to reuse the restore workflow. Um, one thing that you have to keep in mind though, existing documents are not upgraded during setup because this might take a long time. And we of course want you to continue working after the setup as soon as possible. So if you have a lot of documents, um, then they will each be migrated if you update them. So if you touch a document in any way, up, change any index entry, then it will be upgraded to the seventh format with no header. Other documents are kept as they are. Um, I will show you where they are kept later on. In fact, now, because now we will have a look at the database and see what you will see there. So let me just show you my VM. Um, And there we go. Um, here is the new database structure. Um, this, by the way, only contains one file cabinet and one document tray. Um, so as you can see, we have quite a few new tables. First up, auditing. This is what I mentioned earlier. All important tables have their own auditing table dedicated to them. Um, but let's first take a look at, at what you may recognize. For example, disks is still here, containing the file comment disks, log is still the same, page table is still here, except we have sw um, switched, it, uh, switched it up a bit, so the text shots have their own table now. Section, you too know, and well, that's most of it. Um, what's new for you are the version five tables. These are the tables which contain all data which was existing before the upgrade. So we basically take a backup of all tables, which we then have for one, for safety reasons, and two, for reasons of opening documents, which are not yet in the seventh format. Those are still kept in these tables. As soon as you convert them to the new format by editing them, they will be pushed into the main file committed table and the version tables respectively. So quite a few tables. Um, for instance, these two event and history, these are ones my colleague will cover because these are workflow tables. This is actually what happens if this file comment has a workflow. This one, for instance, is one as well. And moving on to the trace. Um, well, this is a bit of a bigger change, not just a restructure and improvement of the file comment, but well, still an improvement, but might be a bit hard to manage. Um, if you don't take certain measures. As you can see here, this is one tray. So this has seven tables. Um, this will happen to every single one of your trays. So what I would recommend is that before you upgrade, you move your tray locations to a different database connection. 
That way you ha will have all your trays in one connection and all your file cabinets and everything else and DW data in another connection. The performance won't be impacted by not doing that, of course. It will actually be better than before, but it might be a bit hard to manage for your database administrator. So to do my favor, you might want to move those tables. Apart from that, the tray now basically looks like a file cabinet, has its own disks, its own identity and lock table. By the by, if you did a bit more in the database and took a bit of a closer look, then you will know that DWSys before um, contained all the file cabinets and also the next DockerD, so what DockerD would be given next. This has now been split. Each file cabinet now manages their own DockerD in the identity table to remove deadlocks, for instance, and everything else is in the cabinets table. So if you're wondering now, why even split those trays up? I mean, it's just becoming harder to manage. That's because, well, just imagine you have 500 trays. Everything is going into one table. That's not very good on performance side. So we switched it up and now everything has its own tables, which is much better for database performance reasons. Now, that's all we will look at here. So let's go back to our presentation and take a look at what you will have to do after you have finished upgrading. Oops, it's gone. Come on, all right. So, first upgrade. First up, a bit of spring cleaning. Um, these two tables will no longer be used after the upgrade. We won't delete them, of course, because you may want to keep your logging and so on, but you won't need them anymore because the logging database has become obsolete with the new auditing tables. And a few miscellaneous changes. For instance, um, if you had encryption set to true in the file cabinet, which could be also set for the header files, then now the whole document will be encrypted because headers have been removed, so everything has been moved to whole document. Um, of course, this won't apply to existing documents, as you know, only for new ones, so you have enough time to change that if you don't want to do that anymore. Also, read-only view move has been, uh, mode has been removed from your site lists. Everything which used that has been set to ad hoc edit mode. So if you don't want that, you will have to check that as well. Just keep that in mind. Auto index, here we have vastly improved and simplified the scheduling and moved it all to the web configuration. So you can manage all your auto index workflows in the web configuration instead of doing part of it in the admin tool. Um, there are some very rare cases in which schedules can be can be incompatible with the new system, even though I haven't seen one yet personally, even, even though I have seen quite a few systems. So I doubt you will run into that, but if you do, the schedule will be set to never, just to be sure, and you will see that when you take a look at the workflows. So to be on the safe side, just quickly skim over all your workflows after the upgrade. You will you can just take a look at the overview. Well, last but not least, some very small changes. Printer input and scanner configurations now need unique names each. And input and scanner configurations have been split actually. So if you had input configurations before, like I'd say 50, you will now have 100 because 50 are input configurations and 50 are scanner configurations. We do that because we now use separate configurations for each. And of course, we don't want to guess what you were using it for because guessing only causes issues. So we just duplicate all of them and you can delete those which you do not need. Lastly, very small change, platform settings apples are no 64 bit. And well, that's it from my side. That's where all the important topics you need to know. And I'm giving back to Phil. Thank you, Daniel. That was some really good info that you gave. Now, there was a lot of questions coming in um, during your session. Uh, Sebastian, did you collect some interesting ones that you can share for us? Yes, there was one, or at least yeah, one um, quite interesting question was if we um, plan to release a hotfix pack up, um, for the version 7 and when we want to release it. So at least there is one. So we released it last week, if I'm not wrong. and it's quite important maybe to know we changed also the yeah, process of installing a hotfix pack now because we 
will not um, provide as in the past hotfix packs, as you know, um, did know it. And from version um, seven on, we will now all the time provide completely new setups, which can be used to install the hotfix packs and should also be used um, for new installations. So if, if you just use all the time the newest um, setup, then the yeah, hotfix pack is already included in the, in the setup. So that's quite important to know. So all the time you have to check if there's a new setup, just download it via our website and use it for new installations and also for installing the hotfix packs. So you can find the hotfix packs or um, also there where you can just download have the download link on our, in our partner portal. Okay, thanks. That's it from my side for the moment. Good. Thanks, Sebastian. So please continue asking your questions during the session. All questions and answers will be published uh, at a later date after the webinar. Now, before we proceed to uh, our next presentation, I'd like to run a little poll. And coming up on your screen now, um, is question on how many DocuWare 7 installs or upgrades have you actually done to date? If you wouldn't mind answering for me, that'd be great. Okay, looks like everyone's answered. Very, oh, a couple more. Okay, it looks like we've stopped voting, so I'll close that and just share that quickly with you. So as we can see, uh, a good percentage of you haven't done an upgrade yet, so hopefully you're getting some really good information from this webinar to uh, help you along uh, when you do your first one. So now um, I'd like to move on to Chris, and Chris, please take over. All right. All right. Good afternoon. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Chris Yor. I'm a software support specialist with DocuWare. And today we're going to talk about some of the technical changes to Workflow Manager in DocuWare 7. We're going to look at some examples of the new functionality. And we're going to discuss how to prepare your DocuWare system for potentially breaking changes. Uh, now, I've created a VM with a very simple workflow here for demonstration. So, we're going to go into our workflow designer. And the first and probably most requested change is the ability to retrieve more than one record from an external data source or file cabinet. So we're going to pull up this test. And as you can see, I've already created a user list, uh, but you can also create a list of roles. Uh, you can also create a list of substitution rules or even of strings uh, by using a keyword field. Uh, so that was, uh, here's your keyword field option, um, and obviously your user role and substitution rules. Uh, so let's take a look at our assigned data step. And this is where all the magic happens. Here's a simple external data selection that will pull all Docuware users in the system. Has to think about it. So you can see we're just looking for where name is not null, uh, which means basically anywhere where we have a name. Uh, and if you look down here at the bottom, maximum number of return rows is here. Uh, with defaults to one normally, I've set it to a maximum of 10 uh, so that I can better show you how this works on this system. And as we see here, the next step simply assigns it to the user list variable that I've created. So let's send a document through. So 
status of webinar. And we'll go ahead and store. And in a moment, we'll see the task be generated. Just verify that I didn't make any changes to the trigger conditions. My apologies. Nope, oh, we're good. Ah, here we are. So as you can see, we've assigned this task to all eight users in the system using a list variable, which before we would have to uh, do some interesting uh, techniques to kind of assign multiple people to that. And now it's fairly simple. So now let's open a new session in Edge so that we can take a look at the new locking mechanism changes. So I'm just going to pull these side by side so that we can take a look here. Okay, and we're going to log in as Peggy Cash. So as you can see, admin is obviously a user on the system. So he does have his own task assigned to him for this particular document. In previous versions of DocuWare, a task would only appear locked if another user was viewing the task at the same time. So in older versions, what we would have is we would have Elizabeth Cashier would go look at her user and it would say that admin is already looking at it. Uh, in IE, you can see the ad, that admin is working on it Cat and uh, Elizabeth says it is locked. Nothing new so far. but if we take both users off the task and we'll have admin add an annotation to the document. Have him open this up. You'll have to bear with me while I try and get this viewer so that we can actually see here. So. I'll do this. Okay, so now he has opened it for editing. Now, if Peggy comes in and tries to click on it, you can see that admin is currently working on the document. In the past, this could uh, lead to some instances where there was uh, some issues where people would connect to the task and it would let them do it but somebody was editing it and then the task would time out that is no longer the case here uh, and this is you know this is preferable uh, to that so now if we save the annotations and we go back we come back to the task It should now open, as we see here. Okay, so this next change is personally my favorite. Um, we've renamed 
the task user and current user variables, which were very frequently used in the workflow designer uh, to last decision user and logged in user, uh, respectively. Uh, so the task user is now known, as I said, the last decision user, which means the last person to make uh, a decision. So as you can see, I had Peggy, I'm sorry, Elizabeth, uh, select and confirm her task. And now I have inside the task list here, a column called last decision user that is populated with that variable. And uh, we can see that here by looking at uh, the workflow system variable here. Uh, and we can also look at the logged in user, which is going to show up again here in uh, the prefill. Uh, my apologies. I seem to have skipped forward a little bit. Um, the prefill was inside the verify next user form in the previous step. My apologies, everybody. Um, and as you can see, your variable logged in user. When admin is logged in, it shows admin. And when uh, Elizabeth Cash is logged in, it shows her name. Uh, and now finally, we are on the final task of this test workflow here. And uh, this new, uh, this next one uh, will let us enter any user we choose. It's not predetermined like the last one was. So what happens if a user misspells a name? Uh, in the past, the system would allow the task to continue. It would enter uh, an empty value when it couldn't find the user, and it would make extremely busy workflow controllers take time out of their day to reassign the task. But here's a better idea. Let's send this task back to admin, but uh, let's say we accidentally put two I's in there. We're going to go ahead and confirm. And now we get an error message immediately upon the confirmation attempt in the corner. I'll try that again for anybody who didn't see. Up here in the corner, admin cannot be matched to any existing user. So that means the user can now simply go back to their task, double check their spelling, and we will be good. Uh, so now there's a couple few things left to discuss that aren't easily demonstrated, so I have prepared some slides. Okay. First, there are some changes to system database fields that may affect some more advanced workflows. <clears throat> this first section shows all the fields that have been removed in DocuR 7. Now, to be perfectly honest, these um, house a lot of system information, and I've never really encountered a workflow that uses any of them, but I'm including them here just for completeness sake. Uh, I wouldn't want anybody who found a use for them to be blindsided. And these are the ones that are remaining the same, which also happen to be the more common ones we see in workflows. Uh, document size, store date time, the store user, um, the user and time of the last modification and access. Um, they are going to remain the same and will have no effect in seven. There are three more fields that I was not able to include on this slide. Uh, DW disk number, so DW disk NO. DW page count and DW VER comment, uh, they've been renamed DW disk, DW section count, and DW version comment, respectively, but they will be automatically found and replaced anywhere they're used, and they should not be an issue. Um, and just a few more small changes, uh, and then I think we'll be ready to turn over to Phil and take questions. Uh, upgrades on very large workflow installations will now only wait for the active instances to be upgraded. So workflow histories for completed documents will actually be performed as a post-installation task. This means that users won't be able to see old workflow history at first uh, for potentially several hours on larger systems. This is expected and should not be a cause for concern. 
Also, dividing two integers now returns the correct decimal value. For example, three divided by two will return 1.5 if the result is stored to a decimal field. In the past, the system would only return the whole number and truncate the fractional portion, and this is no longer the case. This may be of concern to anyone who is specifically relying on the integer division that was previously used. And finally, as we see here, designers are now sent user credentials errors instead of controllers. So if the password in the start activity of a workflow changes, the person who can make the change now gets the email. Uh, this is especially important in implementations that separate the controller and designer tasks um, permissions. At the same time, the task is set to automatically try to complete again in one hour. Um, so if you do change it, you don't have to manually put those user credentials into dozens of tasks. And uh, this is the end of the workflow manager portion. I'll turn it back over to Phil. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Chris. That's uh, uh, some good information there. Um, Sebastian, any questions that you'd like to share from uh, our audience? Yep, there were just not that many questions than for the topic before, but there were some. So one question was, if it's now with Docker version 7, if it's possible to um, import and export Docker workflows to another Docker system. So that's not possible. So that's might be a feature so if anyone interested in it just write it to our um, document.uservoice.com or look for it maybe the features are already there then you can vote for it so and the other questions were not yeah were, there were some other questions but we will just um yeah write them into our forum in the um, next days then okay so. thanks sebastian <laughs> Okay, so before we wrap up, I have uh, one more poll for you, and it's on uh, which topic out of a, a list that we've created uh, you would be interested in seeing in our next webinar. So if you c wouldn't mind um, just making a selection from the list. Good. We've got around about 82% of our audience has voted. Seems to have slowed down. So I think we're good. I'm going to, oh, 83, 84, still some coming in. Okay, at 84, I'm going to close the poll out and share it with you. And uh, there we can see that we have... Uh, an almost equal interest in uh, auto index and transfer and the new synchronization tool. So this is good information and we'll certainly take that on board for our, our next webinar. So just finally, in closing, um, we do need your feedback as always to keep us on our toes and make sure that we're uh, presenting things the right way and giving you the right information. So once the webinar closes and you close out, uh, you will get a survey to fill in and we'd really appreciate uh, it if you would take you know, just a few moments to fill in the survey. And of course, at any time, uh, you can give us feedback on uh, your thoughts and what you would like to see and hear about in uh, upcoming webinars. So on behalf of uh, my colleagues uh, and presenters, thank you very much for your help today. I really appreciate you all attending and um, thank you very much and see you soon. <laughs>